Welcome to another episode of Procrastination Garage. I think we're on week nine now. So the week started off uh, with a little mini vacation with my wife. And in fact, the first video clips coming up will just be shown prepping for that trip a little bit. Um, unfortunately, what happened is before we even left the house, her Toyota Venza, the rear hatch, quit working. It wouldn't go up, wouldn't go down, just made a beeping noise. And so we suffered through four days of our trip not being able to get in the back hatch. Luckily, we didn't really have much of a need to get back there because all of our luggage just fit in the back seat. But it was kind of annoying. So at this point, I have no clue what's going on with it. I have no idea how we're going to get it open. I have no idea what it's going to take to fix it. And I'm hoping it's not going to be a trip to the Toyota dealer. So I think we'll start out this week's episode figuring out how to get in there if we can. I've got a couple things to try, so we'll, we'll do that. And then also, uh, today I helped my daughter move into her new apartment. So my one of my snowmobile trailers is now empty. So I've got a couple things to put in the snowmobile trailer, not snowmobiles by the way, and I need to move that trailer down to the lower property so we have room to work on projects up here. Because one of the projects we need to get to is the F-250, figure out what the exhaust leak is. I don't know if that'll be in this video or not. And then also I said that I was hoping to get to the carburetor on the Bronco, and I would still like to do that. The problem is today is Saturday. The week is gone. I want to have a video published tomorrow on Sunday. And working on the Bronco is something that needs to be done in the afternoon because that's when it's sitting in the shade since it's outside next to the shop. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, first thing we'll do is we'll get into the Toyota Vins issue and see if we can figure out what the heck is going on and whether we can fix that or not. So stay tuned. It's 7 o'clock Monday morning. And what am I doing? Washing my wife's car again. The car I said I don't wash, that I let her take to the car wash. I'm washing it again. Well, we're doing a mini vacation the beginning of this week, and so I figured I wanted to start out with a clean car. So, there you go. The Venza is clean, or cleaner. It's about 90%. Still got some bug guts. It's not perfect, but you know what? By the end of the day, it's going to have a lot more bug guts. And look at the weather to the west, where the mountains are. It looks like it uh, might rain up there, so this may be all for naught anyway. But I've got the big chunks off. We don't look like the Beverly Hillbillies anymore. So, that's a good way to start the week. Wash the car. And that's what happens. So where to begin? Well, uh, I don't know if there's any kind of sensor on the inside of the back hatch that senses when something is too close to the door, maybe. Um, I know we've had issues with that in the past. So we do have some stuff in the back of the, the vents now, some uh, folding chairs. So I think we're going to go in through the back doors and we're going to clear everything away from the hatch to make sure that there's nothing causing it to not open that way. I don't think that's going to do anything for us, but hey, we have to start somewhere. All right, there's what the back end looks like right now. I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure there's anything here that's going to affect it. But again, yeah, we need to pull this stuff out regardless. So say hi, Skeeter. All right, I removed the chairs from the back. Nothing is up against the back door on the inside. So let's press the hatch button and see what happens. Maybe by magic it'll open. No, but it makes a beeping noise. But it's been making the beeping noise. Now, some will say, well, hey, there's a little switch up in the front. you got to press a little switch. Sometimes it gets pressed and then things don't work. I'm aware of the switch. I found it. It's right there. Uh, I think that's in the right position there. But, hey, we'll put it in the other position and see what that does for us. Press the button again. And still nothing. Okay, so quickly I'm going to read the owner's manual and see if that does anything for us. Here we are, Sunday morning. Life got in the way last night. Actually, Chinese dinner did. Had to go get it. So Sunday morning, 4, 8 o'clock. Just Bailey and I out here. All right, I think the first thing we're going to do is go in through the back of the Venza and flip the two levers that I saw. Hopefully that will release a hatch and let me get it open. It's funny, we've owned this vehicle for several years now, and I never paid any attention to these levers. Didn't even realize they were here. So let's see what happens. Not sure I can get to it and pull at the same time. Maybe this one over here. That's a hard pull. I'm going to have to turn the camera off. Okay, never mind. I'm an idiot. If you look real close, there's actually a little symbol in the uh, plastic there that shows that it's actually to release the seat back. 
for the seats that I'm sitting on. So that's not going to work. So how are we supposed to get that open? I've been dragging my feet on reading the owner's manual, but I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. Well, look who came to visit. Hey, Bear. How you doing this morning, buddy? Hmm? Hmm? He's a good boy, huh? Yeah. Actually, Bear spent the night inside last night. He just came out of the house. Good kitty. If there was ever a reason to not buy a vehicle, this is probably it. Here's the Venza owner's manual. Typical, fairly thick. And then look at this manual. This is just for the display and audio system. How crazy is that? That's just too freaking complicated. And Bear's going to come over and check it out too. Bear, why don't you read the audio one and I'll check out the other one. See what we can find. I did use the seat back release and put it to good use. I lowered the seat on the left side so I can access the back. In each corner, yikes, the lighting is terrible in here. In each corner, like back where that water bottle is, and then on this side, underneath the carpet, are little plastic panels that pop right up. This side has all the equipment for the jack, the, uh, the jack and the handle and stuff. There's nothing over on that side there. Anyway, I removed both those panels to see if there's any kind of emergency release there. There's a panel under here, big plastic panel, and I didn't remove it only because it's just hard to be on top of it and move it at the same time. So it is time to do a deep internet dive and see what I can find because I'm coming up blank. In the meantime, I'm going to disconnect the battery because I did see someone said that, you know, disconnect the battery and let the system reset itself and maybe it'll work after that. So we'll give that a shot. Hood up and our trusty number 10 wrench and we'll go ahead and get the negative side disconnected here disconnected and i'm going to go inside for a while and scan the internet and in the meantime this car can sit out here for a while with the battery disconnected so hopefully it'll forget any easy memory that it can erase back at the venza and hook the battery back up doing some internet sleuthing and not really finding any answers um one thing I did see was the uh, that I did have the switch in the wrong position um, for a while, so I'll make sure that's in the correct position. That's an override switch. And then uh, I also learned that there's a little button at the back on the tailgate, which I didn't even really knew existed until yesterday. And when I pushed it, nothing happened, but I wondered if I pushed it and I had the interlock, the safety switch, in the wrong position. Uh, my understanding is that button, all it does is release the latch, and then you open it manually from there. So we'll give that a shot and see what that does for us. First things first, uh, I do have this in the off position right now. The on position is when the red is showing, which to me is backwards, but that's fine. But I've tried it both on and off, so I know that's not affecting using the switch up here on the dash or the key fob. But maybe that'll have an effect on the, uh, the switch here at the back. So if you look up underneath here, there is a switch right there, kind of between the Z and the A. So we'll press that and see what that does for us. Maybe. Aha! Look at there. We're in. Okay, so in reading other things, one thing they talked about with was weather stripping. That if the weather stripping comes out of place, that can cause a problem. So we'll go around and check all that. Uh, you know, that strut there is not looking great. So that may be an issue. I don't know about other weather stripping. I don't know, we'll look at a few things. But right now, let's just try and, I lost my keys. Yeah, there they are, right there. Tried just using the key. Okay. Let's try closing it manually. Yeah, I hear the lock mechanism. Yeah, see, they're using the button. It did not like that. Something is still going on. 
What do you think, Bear? All right, let's see if we can do the button again. Yep, oh, there's a lock button. All right, well, I don't know. If we can get in and out using that button, I don't care if the power lift gate works. Power lift gate to me is more trouble than it's worth. That's just something else to go wrong. Um, and there's a whole mechanism down there, but the issue seems to be at the lock level. So I don't know. Now, if I press the button again, it should not close, I think. Press. No, it worked that time. Yeah, there's a bad spot right in there, isn't there? Okay. So the question is, how many times am I going to make you guys watch this open and close or not open and close? You know, I need to have a video that's 10 to 15 minutes long or longer. So I guess this is a good way of wasting time. All right, we're going to call this problem fixed for now. I, there's something a little wonky going on here, but I'm not paying Toyota prices for parts. So as long as we can get in and out of here, it's good to go. So let's move on to something else. You're just a loud kitty. Yeah, you days, buddy. So what lessons have we taken away from this? Well, several really. Uh, let's go ahead and try the button here. All right, it's not happy, but I think I opened it manually last time. So, let's just close it manually. The lock mechanism works. Try the button. Let's see, it doesn't like it. But that's okay. I don't think we care. As long as we can come up here, push the button, and it opens just fine. And then, so then, we can close it just fine. So we've owned this thing for like three years and I didn't really know that there was a manual way of doing this. That's amazing. You know, so I always chastise my wife for never reading the owner's manual when she buys a vehicle. And I never read the owner's manual on this one either because it's not my daily driver. Um, maybe should have done that. But we learn as we go. So for now, we'll just open it that way, call it good. And all right. I'm relatively satisfied. And you want to know what the bonus is? The bo <laughs> bears me out. The bonus is because I disconnected the battery, that means the clock now on the inside is upset, and my wife has to figure out how to reset it. And this one is a tough vehicle to figure out how to reset it. So it gives a challenge to my wife. And anytime you can challenge your wife, that's always a good thing. So let's move on. Since we're kind of half-assing projects this morning, let's take a look at the Bronco and see what we can figure out with it. Um, I see the battery charger's plugged in, so hopefully it's got a charged battery. Uh, I need to move the, the lawnmower crap away from the front and this piece of wood. And we'll see if we can get it to fire up, and I'll show you guys what's going on with it. First step, clean up in front of it. I say clean up in front of it. What I really mean is just move the crap from one place to another. So I'm running the air compressor now because it just doesn't feel right playing around with the Bronco with a flat tire on it. So we'll go ahead and get that tire aired up. Look at the weather cracking on these tires. Time for new tires? Yeah, probably. There's something satisfying about airing up a flat tire.
Yeah, there's 25 pounds in it. That's good enough. Especially since it's probably not going anywhere for a while anyway. Okay, let's hit the key and see what happens. The fuel's a long way from the carburetor, so if it turns over, it'll take a while. Yeah, battery's got a full charge. See already the choke is kicked off. But she does run. Man, it's rich though. I can really smell the gas. Let's see, it won't take any gas. Not well. Yeah, right. Revving a cold engine that's been sitting, that's good. It's a tired 302, it ain't gonna matter. Alright, I'll let it run for a minute and I'll bring you guys back. I thought the choke had kicked off, but the choke is still on. You know, RPMs are way too high. It'll kick down here in a little bit, or I'll kick it down. The engine's warmed up. She's finally idled all the way down. You can see some black smoke coming out. She's actually running better than she has the last couple times I've started up, which has probably been six months since last time I've fired up. But running way rich. See, I'm thinking there's a float problem, but I also know that the, there's some mixture screws that uh, can be adjusted. I should probably look up what the settings are and, and maybe play with those a little bit. But next step is we need to get under the hood. And certainly the idle's a little too low. It's down about 400 RPM right now. And I'd be much happier around 700 RPM. I'm not sure how well my gas gauge is working, but it's reading down around empty. So I'm going to put some of my seven, eight, ten dollars $10 a gallon uh, ethanol-free high test in here. Because that's what I have on hand. And honestly, as much as the thing sits, I wouldn't run anything but the ethanol-free. So let me get a couple of gallons in here and see if that... Well, it's not going to do anything, but at least it'll keep it running while we're working on it. Let's see if that affects the gauge at all. Oh, yeah, look at that. She comes right up. All right, nice. You can see it's a shiny new carburetor, but it's a shiny new Chinese knockoff model. And, you know, there's probably problem number one. But the problem is I don't want to spend a lot of money on a carburetor. I mean, we're 400 bucks to replace the carburetor on this for a good one. And eventually I want to put fuel injection on it. So I hate spending that kind of money and then turn around and spending a bunch more money on fuel injection. So I'm trying to get one of these cheap Chinese carburetors to work. So I'm going to pull the air cleaner off um, and then we'll go from there. The idle mixture screws on this thing are supposed to be at one and a half turns when you first start tuning it. And, and I'll be the first to say I am no expert on tuning. I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get the thing to run halfway decent. Um, and not flood out. So I'm going to set these. There's one here and then on the other, just around the other side of the carb There's another one. I'm going to set them both back to one and a half And we'll see what that does for us now You're supposed to do this after the engines warmed up Which means you're on the idle circuit and not on the choke and then also when you have the idle set right well I'm idling real low right now, but I'm not sure if the idle is low because of uh, the screws because uh, the float sticking or I just don't have the idle adjusted right so I'm just kind of grasping at straws here again I'm an idiot I don't have a clue what I'm doing both of the adjustment screws are set back to one and a half so let's see what happens nothing Now she's 
running really rich. And the choke's back on a little bit. Yeah, you can see it there. I'm going to try turning the adjusters while it's running. Can't show you guys, I don't have it in my hand. Okay, I'm not going to do that because like I just said, it's back on the choke a little bit. So we got to wait till it's off the choke. So we had to take a bit of a break. Well, didn't have to. My wife went to McDonald's and grabbed breakfast for us, and so I took a breakfast break. And so I was contemplating while I was up there eating breakfast. And, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and pull this uh, carburetor off of there. Uh, I sprayed some carb cleaner around the base while I was running to see if I had a vacuum leak because I thought that was a possibility. I didn't notice any change in RPM, so I don't think that's it. I truly don't know what's going on. But like I said, I'm going to pull the carburetor off and we're just going to kind of start at the beginning and look at everything and see if I can see anything obvious. Again, I am no expert on carburetors. Um, another thing is uh, I had a problem with the ignition on this and I traced it down to the electronic conversion box that it had. Uh, it didn't have a Pertronics in it. It had another, another company's kit and that company had since sold and the new company that bought the, the technology they didn't have a great review, so I decided not to replace that one, even though it had been a pretty good setup for a lot of years. So now I've got a Pertronics in here, and, and it fired right up as soon as I installed that. But what I don't know is that this thing has never had the Vacuum Advance hooked up on it, and it currently isn't again. And the Pertronics certainly doesn't account for that, uh, you know, being some kind of electronic advance. Now, what I wonder is if the kit that was in there before did, and I need to see if I can track down the instructions on it and learn more about it. So that could be part of our problem. You know, it could be a timing issue. But again, I everything I read says that, you know, when you're smoking and you're flooding like that, that it strictly is a, a fuel problem. So I would like to kind of at least figure that out or make sure that it is not that. So like I said, I'm going to pull the carburetor and we'll take a look at it. Old Broncos are notorious for not having any room under the hood. So you can see this offset air cleaner thing. So in order to get it off, you've got this nut here to remove. And then you've got the wing nut up on top. And obviously the wing nut is the easy one. So it just unscrews. And then we need a wrench. I think a half inch for that one. Okay, I was wrong. 7 16 No biggie. Yay, there she is, all purdy. Now, let's see if we can get that off. We've got a throttle return spring that needs to come off. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, she's off all right. All the way off. Maybe we should uh, reconnect it down. All right, got that in reconnected. And then uh, we've got the linkage here, and this little clip is already undone, but I've just been fooling around with the thing. So uh, that's disconnected. So we're good to go there. I'll pull that off so we don't lose it. And my finger's in the way. And then what else we got to deal with? Uh, we got some lines on the back, and we got a fuel line up here on the front. Uh, let's see if we can just maybe pull this clamp off the pliers we got there oh we got lots of fuel pressure right now so we'll let that bleed down and what else we got I think mainly we just got to do the carb bolts at the base now and I suppose those are also 7 16 yeah. yeah that one's not even tight that certainly isn't helping anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get that done pardon my fingers being in the way to get that nut down there, I think we need to remove this little guard right here. It's kind of blocking the nut coming off. And there's always one hard one to get to, and that's the one right back there. But we'll get her. And one more connection. It's this thing right in here, which looks like some kind of little air tube. It goes down on the manifold. Which, by the way, if you look at my manifold, you can see it's cracked right there. We got the carburetor off, and 
there's the base gasket. I don't see any signs where it wasn't sealing. It looks to be pretty good to me. Um, a little dirt in there. Uh, we'll clean all that up before we put it all back together, but I don't think our problem is here. Uh, prepped a nice work service here. Anybody else recognize that? Old audio-visual cart from back in the day? And it makes a great uh, mobile workstation. If you can keep the top cleaned off, usually it's covered in crap. But it rolls around nice. It's heavy-duty enough for this kind of stuff. You could put a piece of plywood on there and it'd make it even better. But I've got another plan instead of doing that. So anyway, but here we are. But anyway, look at this. Uh, flip this up. There's one of the vacuum ports that's not being used. And I lost it where to go. <laughs> Why can't I find it? Look at that. That thing's cracked. So that certainly was leaking. And there's another one somewhere else here. Right there. That one's just as bad. And now, when I put this carburetor on, those things would have been in good shape because it was brand new. So that's just from sitting. Um, but certainly not a high quality product. Now the question is, do I have any uh, block offs? Um, I think I do, let me look. I do. Technician's resource, ultimate professional products. Now the question is, um, is this what I used to put on there initially? Maybe it didn't come with them, and if so, these things are crap. But they'll certainly uh, take care of us for now. But this is something to remember in the future, if we ever get the thing running right, and then it starts running like crap again, that's probably where we should start looking. The good news is, the ones I pulled off, they're not an exact match for those, so this is not what I used. I noticed this big one here is even cracked. Um, this is for a PCV valve, which this engine it doesn't hook up that way. There, There is something in the valve cover, but it hooks up to the air cleaner. I'm not even sure if it's a PCV valve or not. Anyway, so we need to find a replacement. One of these, and I think I can make one of those big ones fit. I did find one that fit. It was a little tighter, but a little WD-40 it went on there. So now let's get the other ones replaced. I looked up a vacuum diagram. I looked up a carburetor vacuum diagram to see what ports are for what. And uh, what I determined is this is the one here for spark. So instead of capping that one off, we're, I found some tubing. We're gonna go ahead and run that to the distributor. And I don't know if it'll work or not. That distributor is pretty old and crusty on the inside. So it may or may not advance, but we'll at least get it hooked up like it's supposed to be. And then we'll worry about that some other time. Of course, we still don't know if the thing's gonna run when we get it back together. But for now, we're gonna flip the carburetor over and take it apart and check the float, see what's going on with the float level. We've got four bolts to get into the top here. And what I don't know, I don't remember if I ever took this carburetor apart after I bought it or not, because it, from day one it didn't work like it was supposed to, but whether I actually tore it apart and looked at it, it's hard to say. Uh, I need to move away from the camera to take this apart. You know what, I've got a tripod. Let me see if I can get it set up. Okay, tripod set up. I don't know if this is gonna help you guys or not. I guess if it, yikes. Shows up in the video, it did. As tight as this thing is, yeah, I'm not sure I've ever had that off. Yeah, number four. All right, I think I'm gonna pop off of here. Mm, we need to undo some more stuff, but it should be breaking loose. Dang. All right, I know somebody's saying, hey, dumbass, there's two more bolts on the back side. Yeah, yeah, I found them, finally. Like I said, I'm not the brightest bulb here. Yeah, I think it'd just be easier. I'm trying to finagle this. Maybe we can just... Shit. So 
We've got a little lever hooked up over here. It goes down to the choke, but instead of trying to figure out how to unhook it, I think we'll just undo the bracket. And then it'll be real nice and easy to get this off of there. If we remember which way it went on there. Tell you what. Why don't we pull this off? Really? There we go. And then put this back on. Somehow. I ah, will figure it out later. It's not a big deal. All right, so there's a top gasket. There's nothing to see there. All right, here's a float assembly. I don't know. I'm going to take it apart. Let's we'll see what it looks like. I flipped the carburetor upside down so the float was in the down position or up position um, and tried to blow through the uh, fuel filter here. And I couldn't blow through it, so that means the float was certainly working. It's not leaking. And as soon as I reached my finger up and pushed the float down a little bit, I was able to blow through there. So, unscientific, but that at least tells me that the float and the needle and seat are working okay. Uh, the float adjustment may still be off a little bit. I'll take a measurement of it and see where it is. I'm not 100% sure where it's supposed to be, but something I saw online was showing, I think, 5 eighths of an inch. So we'll see if we're anywhere near that. There's only one thing I see that I don't really like. Um, there's a bit of a friction there when the float is all the way down and getting it to release. It's rubbing up against this side. And if you push it over this way a little bit, it works much freer, but it won't stay there because there's that much slop in it. So I'm going to try and bend right across this tab here and see if I can tweak it just a little bit that way so it doesn't have any friction. I don't think that's causing us any problems, but it isn't helping. I moved it over, I, I tweaked it, I tweaked it a little more than I wanted to really, but it now, no matter which side it's on, it moves freely. So that's a plus. When I take a measurement at the back side of the float, when the uh, needle and seat are seated, uh, it doesn't sit level for one, and it's about uh, 5 sixteenths. I don't know if that's right or not, but what I do know is that every, everything I've read says that the float should sit about level. So it's it's definitely not level. So I'm going to go ahead and tweak this little tab here and make it sit level. I mean, worst case is I won't be getting enough fuel. At least then it will probably be running better, because right now we know it's getting way too much. I can always come back in and tweak it again, but I'm going to make it sit level. I'm done fooling around with it. Uh, we're going to put it all back together, put it back on there, and see what it does different, if it does anything different. I'm not opposed to buying another cheap carburetor for it, if that would fix it. I hate throwing good money after bad, if it doesn't, but uh, like I said, I'm no carburetor expert, and I'd rather just uh, plug and play if I can. So let's just put it back together and see what it does, if it behaves any differently, and if we're maybe, even just a little improvement, we're headed on the right track, that would be something. Everything is reassembled. Correctly, I think. The only thing I had a question about was this little thing here, but it looks like I've got that right. So we'll go ahead and put the carburetor back on, and this time we'll hook up this one vacuum line and get it all buttoned up and see what happens. I got the carburetor back on there. All the bolts are tight. Throttle linkage is reinstalled. Fuel line. I even got a vacuum line going to the distributor. So now I need to put the air cleaner back on and pick up the tools and then see what happens when we hit the key. One more thing before we try and fire it up. How about we get rid of some of the leaves and other crud that's in here. Now that the air cleaner is back on, eh, we won't really do any damage. I'll go ahead and finish this up. All right, let's try her again, see what happens. Yeah, she doesn't sound any better, does she? Well, 
let her warm up and see what happens. She's warmed up, she's idled down, she's sitting about 450 RPM. Uh, it's a little on the low side, but I don't mind that so much. The high idle, uh, when the choke was on, was way too high. Uh, that's a whole other adjustment. I'm not sure how to do it, but I was doing some reading on it. But right now I'm going to play with the idle mixture screws on the front of the carburetor and see if I can, I don't know, I don't know what they'll do, but see if it makes it run any better. I mean, this is not ideal. This is not really drivable, but it is better than it was last time I had it running. I mean, it was to the point where I couldn't even drive down the road. It was so rich and couldn't hardly keep it running. So let's see. One thing I should probably verify is that the choke is all the way off. If the butterfly is all the way open, I'm going to have to pull the air cleaner loose to do that. So I'm going to get my tools and we'll do it while the engine's running. Butterfly is completely open. That's good. So we know the choke is all the way off. So we still don't know why we're not running as well as we should. We're probably going to move away from this project for now. I do need to figure out the timing on it and make sure at least the static timing is right. Uh, I need to look that up and I need to clean up the timing marks because I don't think I can see them with the timing line right now. I'm going to say we're done with the Bronco for today. I need to take a bicycle out of that trailer and a couple other things and I need to load that in it. As well as that, both of those are little tow behinds for snowmobiles. And then I'm going to take that trailer and park it down on our lower property. Uh, to clear out the driveway a little bit. So we'll do that. That'll probably be about the end of this week's procrastination garage, but we'll see. There it is, pretty much an empty trailer. Let's get the last couple things out of there. One down, one to go. Of course, the second one's not going anywhere until we finish cleaning the top off. This is a neat little trailer here. Uh, a friend and I have been working on it. He did some work, I did some work. And uh, the whole idea is to use it to haul firewood and then we can also haul supplies for doing a lunch out on the trail. Uh, barbecue some hot dogs or hamburgers or something like that. So it, it does need a few modifications and we'll be doing those before winter rolls around. You guys will get a better look at it then, but I'm really happy with it. It's time. Let's get this trailer out of the driveway. All right, what the hell? We're taking it for a run around the block. Might as well. Never mind weather crack tires. And in fact, the steering system's about ready to fall out of it. It's good enough. back home again one thing though it is idling now it, last time I drove it once it warmed up it wouldn't idle at all so I guess we're gonna call it a partial win I don't know it's frustrating this is a wrap on procrastination garage remember the goal of procrastination garage not only is it to provide a little bit of content for you guys it's to help keep me motivated and, and force me to do something every week because I feel I'm accountable to YouTube. So that's what we're doing here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope you found something useful in it. If nothing else, that I'm a complete idiot on some things, hey, that's fine too. So what did we do? Well, my wife and I went on a little mini vacation at the beginning of the week. You guys didn't get a go, but uh, we had a good time and it gave me a chance to rest and relax. Uh, we washed the vehicle before we went on that vacation and then we found out the hatch didn't work and so that gave us something to do when I got back. Even though we didn't fix it, we at least uh, have it working now to where we know how to get in and out of it. And then we spent a little bit of time on the Bronco. Poor unloved Bronco. We got it running, pulled the carburetor off, looked at things, didn't really find anything wrong with it. It is idling better, but it still, still runs like crap. Um, it's got timing issues and it's got carburation issues, and I'm an idiot on both subjects, so I'm not sure where we go from here. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, uh, hit the like button, hit the follow button, tell your friends. And uh, check back next week. And remember, my name's Matt, and this is Procrastination Garage. Y'all have a good week.